Hello and welcome to this video about stretch marks. It is one of the main concerns for the girls in my course, so I just thought I'd make a video about it. Let's start with the most boring part, products. And just to set things straight, this video is more about tips and tricks that won't cost you anything or next to nothing. So if you're looking for product advice, expensive product advice, then this video isn't for you. I've been working in the fashion industry for the last 17 years and I've had easy access to expensive cosmetics for a long time and I don't believe in them. Well, some are okay, some are quite good, but mostly it's a waste of money. So let's go through the products that I used. Olive oil, coconut oil. This is the most expensive thing that I invested in and it's 20 euros and just normal baby oil. So let's start with the olive oil. It's not the best of smell, but it's really good for your skin. And especially if you're pregnant during the winter time, this is very nourishing. You can also just pop it in your bath as you can also with the coconut oil. The coconut oil is better for the summer time. It's just a bit more refreshing and it's really easy to use and it smells nice. And then we have the baby oil. It's just, you know, you've been preparing for your baby anyway. You've probably bought a couple of different types of baby oil. Just try and use those. What's good for the baby can only be good for you as well. There's less chemicals, less fragrances, which can also dry the skin out. So just go through what you have and test that out. Like this one has been a lifesaver. It's I found it in my closet. It's about 10 years old. I don't even know if it's still on the market, but it's like a gel. I don't know if you can see. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? I put it on my belly at night and in the morning I still felt the moisture. So it made me feel really relieved that my belly was having that moisture throughout the whole night. With the other oils, they kind of just soak in very fast. You don't know if they soak into your clothes or if they soak into your belly, really. So I just did a mixture of everything. I used the olive oil and the coconut oil whenever I was cooking. I did you not know, multitask and just slap some on whilst frying the broccoli like a lady and this i actually just purchased because it was in the ads everywhere and it smells nice but i also think it's maybe not necessary there are also other oils that you can invest in obviously and you can find anything literally on the internet so coming to the first tip involving the oils try applying them during your shower or during your bath just locks up more moisture and then pat yourself dry after so you don't rub it off and if you're wondering what my towels look like they're perfectly fine they're not drenched in oil i actually used this method before being pregnant as well it's something my mom taught me i don't know i've just been doing it forever and it just gives you this glow but be careful don't slip the next tip also has to do with showering and it's switching between warm and cold water. This is really good for your circulation, especially for the blood circulation in your skin. And it has many other benefits. You can also do it when your legs are swollen or to prevent varicose veins. Always starting from the bottom going up to the heart. Just give it a try. It might be a little bit of torture, but it also makes you feel really refreshed. So next time you're in that shower, think about it. And the next thing that's underestimated is scrub, exfoliating your skin. You can use a loofah, exfoliating mittens that you can get for the shower or for the bathtub. You can use a brush, dry brushing, and you can also just use a scrub scrub out of a tub. This is again also stimulating for the skin, for the circulation. It helps to soak up products better and helps with the cell renewal. So we're also looking for that cell turnover. You don't want to be slapping your products onto dead skin, do you? Once a week is enough and I'm not talking about vigorous scrubbing, I'm just talking about gentle exfoliation and you should enjoy it. It should feel really good. Don't hurt yourself. 
Another cool thing that's out on the markets are belly masks. They've even come up with some that do help prevent stretch marks. The only thing is I didn't like them very much because it was quite cold and I ended up warming them up in water. Even then you put them on and they turn cold quite quickly and you end up dribbling all over the place. So if you tend to sit on the couch and let things soak in then get a couple of towels and also tuck in a towel into your pants so you're not drenched by the end of the session. Next thing is warmth. I don't know if you've ever taken notice but the transition time between summer and winter often leaves us with flaky, itchy skin. That's due to the coldness that we're not used to. So keeping your belly warm can also help prevent stretch marks. Just give yourself an extra layer of clothing and you'll always be snuggly and warm. There's also one misconception about heat or about warmth. If you have a hot bath or a hot shower, this will actually dry you out. It will warm you up, but it will not keep you hydrated. So that's also a reason why I tend to put my oil on in the shower and keeping in mind that you shouldn't be having a hot bath or a hot shower anyway to not influence the temperature of your baby. So just keeping that in the back of your mind. Next thing, talking about warmth and talking about them extra layers, get a belly band to help support your skin because it's carrying that extra weight and a bit of support can just help. But be careful when purchasing a belly band. You don't just want to buy the fabric tube that works as an extension for your t-shirt that doesn't fit you now anymore because you've grown out of it. You want it to have the support as well. Another tip is to massage your belly regularly. You can do it while you're in the shower to save yourself some time. Let's multitask. There will be a video uploaded on that as well, on how to massage your belly. This is good for the circulation and relieving any tension and just to move your skin around a bit. Just getting that movement in there, helping that natural elasticity to come through. Next tip is nutrition. Now that is kind of a whole topic on its own. Eat healthy if you want some tips and tricks on how to intake your five a day with ease. There's a separate video on that. And besides the things that land on your plate, you want to check your vitamins. Look at the supplements that you're already taking for pregnancy and just make sure that the following is covered. Zinc, vitamin A, C and E and omega-3. Omega-3 should always be in your diet anyway because of your baby's brain development and if you need an extra boost on A, C and E there is a very simple smoothie that you can make that tastes absolutely delicious. Only three ingredients, carrots, apples and oranges or lemons. Also make sure you're doing something for your collagen and your gelatin. There is so many supplements out there today. Just go on Amazon and find what suits you best. I'm just using a collagen powder in my coffee in the mornings. It doesn't taste of anything. It doesn't smell of anything. You can put it in hot drinks, in cold drinks. You can do whatever you want with it really. That's why I chose it. It's linked down below if you're interested. And for the gelatin, you can find it in gummy bears or in bone broth and I would choose the latter because gummy bears can make you feel a bit groggy and mess with your energy levels. Coming from nutrition to hydration, needless to say all our cells are made out of 90% water and with the skin being the biggest organ of our body we need to make sure that that is well hydrated. I've also made a separate video on that, I just wanted to keep this video here as short as possible just going through stretch mark stuff. The next big tip is movement. So if you're not pregnant yet then I really highly recommend you start getting acquainted with yoga, stretching open your front side of your body so that your belly gets used to stretching out a bit 
and it's just a natural way to train your skin. Even if you're pregnant already, you can train your skin easily, go to a yoga class. If you're looking for an online course, there's a link down below where you can join me on the prenatal yoga journey, where we cover a bit more than just yoga, all the issues and all the other questions that come up during pregnancy. But back to the main point, movement is crucial on training your skin naturally to gain elasticity. The next tip is not to ignore tightness. If you feel your skin is tight, it feels a bit, you know, like when you've washed your face first thing in the morning, that type of tightness, then don't ignore it. Here's what you should do. Gently exfoliate, gently use a lotion or a fatty cream that will go deep into your skin, then warmth. Just cover it up with your belly band or with any long clothes that can create warmth. And then all you need is patience. It won't go away straight after you've done that, but it will soothe it and you will notice a difference. Just do it a couple of times and just do it regularly just to prevent the tightness from occurring at all. But you need patience remember that the next thing many women suffer from an itchy belly especially as the belly starts to grow in third trimester and it's mainly around the belly button area or around the center area my advice is do not itch so instead of itching you can always tap or you can just rub your belly and people will think that you're communicating with your baby. Your skin is going through enough already. It's very delicate, it's very thin at the moment, and then you scratching with your nails, will, isn't, uh, it's not good. And if you're not careful, it can turn into a rash, which can lead to an infection, which will make you have to go to your doctor. You don't want to experiment on these things while you're pregnant. The easiest thing is not to itch. That's where I say don't use an oil, use a cream, use a fatty cream, something that you would smear on a baby's bum, which you might already have prepared in your assortment anyway. So just use a thick cream or any sort of hydrating lotion which tends to soak into the skin and the oils just tend to lay on top. The most crucial phase for stretch marks is actually at the end of the pregnancy. I have four weeks left to go and nothing has happened yet, but four weeks is a long time. So stay tuned, I'll be sharing my results. Yes, only using the coconut oil and the olive oil and the baby oil. And yes, I'm giving you all this advice and I haven't survived my pregnancy without stretch marks yet. But that's also a point that I want to make. Even if I do get stretch marks, it's not a big deal. All these little flaws that we try to fight against, they're actually part of our life. They're part of the story that our body tells. Luckily, we live in an era where social media has become open to flaws and a lot of girls and a lot of women are sharing everything, encouraging you to also share instead of hiding yourself. Similar to scars. This one was cancer, this one was nearly cancer, or they thought it was. These are scars that I don't hide because they tell a story. And if my story can help other people overcome theirs, that's really rewarding for me. I feel like I've helped someone. The fear of not being good enough or not being perfect enough is so toxic. So see every flaw of yours as a part of the story that your body is telling. It's not ugly, it's the opposite. It's very charismatic and it shows a lot of strength and you're not alone. Always remember that. Like for me, I got away with it maybe the first time, but this is not the last child that I have planned and I'm sure that I will end up with stretch marks at one point in my life, but it'll be something that I'm proud of. But still, we don't need to make things worse than they are, so if you can prevent, then try. What I haven't talked about is that genes also play an important role, so you might not even be able to avoid stretch marks if it's in your genetics. Everybody is different. What is also very crucial though is the aftercare. When you've had your child, the attention that you pay to your skin after. 
is also a procedure that needs to be looked at. So stay tuned, I'll be making a video on that definitely. A lot of women when they come home from the hospital they see nothing but the baby and they completely neglect themselves. But you should also take the time to indulge in self-care because you're just as important as your child. If you're not taken care of properly then who's going to take care of the child properly? <laughs> Stay tuned for more. I hope this helped. Share your experiences in the comments below or if I've missed anything that you think is very important and needs to be added here, comment down below. Make sure to like this video if you found it helpful and if you don't want to miss anything subscribe and hit the notification button and I will see you next time.